Oh, hi guys, this is Dan here. Praise the Lord. Um, I feel like I, I want to do more videos for you. Uh, I'm working here in my home office, but I wanted to do more videos for you and um, try to help you with topics that will really inspire you. Um, you know, if some of you, some of you know that I have a, I'm an award-nominated musician, and more importantly than that, because I don't really look at awards as much, but you know, I use my music to change lives, to to touch lives, to 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 touch a lot of people all over the world, people of many nations, especially Jewish people too. Uh, but people of many, many different nations, Pakistan, Italians, uh, yeah, many, I can't even think of all of the different nations I'm reaching now. And I'm using my music uh, with my organization to reach people around the world, especially in North America and Israel, but around the world, to uh, you know experience God's love. This is part of my nonprofit work, to be touched and changed, to experience God's power, uh, presence, um, to know of God's promises. And of course, I have some inspiring music as well, just to inspire and uplift the spirit. So... Uh, there are people of many different backgrounds that follow my music um, and occasionally I want to do teaching videos on here to help you get to that next level or just to get more clarity about things. I mean my YouTube channel is not that huge, I usually release videos through my other partners who have much bigger channels than me, but I want to give you teachings that will really speak to you. And so this one is about giving, I wanted to do because it's, I want to share information that's been helping me understand the, the timeless principles. Uh, last teaching I did was about the prophetic, if you remember, if you've seen it. And some, some, a dear, you know, a friend of the ministry actually emailed me, asked me to do more teachings, and I, I I'm looking into that. I'm just been busy with my projects and my work. I'm uh, performing on TV on Sundays. I, I get about 500 emails a month as well. So it's not easy to catch up with everything, and make, making sure I have time with God to pray and to receive clarity. But you know what I mean. But uh, I wanted to do teachings as well so I, I may do more teachings about the prophetic I may do teachings about how to overcome some fears maybe email me what you need the links below I'll give you my personal email address which is my my business email address as well it's below uh, okay but this one is about giving and it's I am doing this because it's helped me so much to gain the knowledge from the lead, leaders that I've been studying from and from God himself so uh, giving is, is a very sacred thing for God I, yeah, there's timeless principles about giving one of them is that, you know, in Proverbs 11, when you give, you shall be blessed, the generous shall prosper. But there's, you got to know much more than that, what it means. And then what I love about is Proverbs 3, that God desires us to have favor with God and with men. This is in the Word. The Word says that we are to have favor with God and with men when we do things right. And there are people who don't know how to give so that God can bless what they're giving. And as well as Malachi 3 says that you've been robbing God. Many of us have been robbing God. Well, we all have at different times, right? Until we figure out the principles and do them. So first you got to figure it out, then you got to do it. So two different things, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, only we can be accountable to that because uh, even when people say, I have done pre-pandemic, I used to do concerts all over the world, North America. And when a leader would tell me, you could do whatever you want, I kind of laugh about it because I'm like, you really want me to do whatever? I like, yeah, yeah. I have to really know that I'm accountable for every thought, every second, and then, then I can really do a great job. But when they tell me you could do whatever you want, it just tells me that they're not really skilled in leadership and they're basically saying, we trust you to do whatever you see fit. And I have to know how, what it means to me. And that's how I've been able to turn events like that into successful, fruitful events where lives are touched and impacted. But I generally don't like it when a leader tells me you can do whatever you want. And no rabbi likes it, no preacher likes it, no established musician likes it. Because we like to be told, you know, roughly you have 20 minutes, you have 60 minutes, you have 50 minutes, then you, then you need to close, then you need to... Uh, you know, then we'll do this. You know, we like order, you know. So order is important to God. And if some of you are givers, and you should be, I mean, it's princ it's a principle. Uh, here's a couple things that I've learned that are really making a difference when it's applied right. And uh, it will help you receive the blessings mentioned in Malachi 3, that God can bless you more than you can imagine. Whereas other people are getting the, the word in the spirit of the robbing God. And so which side do you want to be on? I definitely want to be in the blessed side. So uh, an offering, uh, we know that generally tithes represent a tenth of the income. You should give it to your congregation or to any ministry that's organized, like a corporate, incorporated ministry, because it's ordered there that ministers to you, whether it's in song and words. Um, and then there's the offerings, uh, and that's how God is able to bless you. Now, a lot of people make a mistake where they give to the poor, for example, because they read scriptures talking about helping the poor, and they think that's an offering. Uh, what I've learned is that that's a huge mistake. Uh, now, when I give, when people give to my organization, we reach people around the world with their music, with videos, with professionally recorded songs, which I go to a professional studio to do. We have to hire musicians, we have to ship out CDs. I'm actually getting ready to do more shipments of CDs to people we reach around the world. And we do all that work. It's sponsored by donors. And so 
obviously you know people give and usually when they give to my organization i pray also for them to be blessed and it works good for everybody and i'll put a link below not that it's the purpose of the video but if you want to support our music our outreaches our share the light efforts you can give to the organization there'll be links you can give and get a tax receipt i'll put links just so you know you can do that uh but but i really want to teach that to you and to all of us to think when you give to an organized organization um you know um it's much better than to give randomly you know so um thinking here for a second when you give let's say to a church that's really well organized or a ministry like one what i lead that's organized it's incorporated we have a board of directors uh, i have a personal mentor that we check in and talk uh, you know and we do work that impacts uh, people around the world you know it's an organized structure there um you know and the, the way that i lead it i i know for sure that when people give as i pray for them as work is done they're giving into good soil and there's of course different organizations probably that speak to you for example i give to my local church and uh because i'm fed there spiritually as well and then i give to when i want to help the poor i help through another organization other organizations that are established that they do outreaches you know um and they bring poor people together for concerts they give them clothing they give them food they tell them about the good news because they bring together people who can't really help themselves very well and they give them but when when it comes to giving to the poor that's what i do is as people support my work or not i'll give back to the poor I'll give back to these organizations like Hands of Mercy and all that. But I, what I've learned is when I give to a poor person directly, like it could be an evangelist in Africa or India or in some villages or in a third world country like that, like Brazil or any parts of India that are very poor. When I give to it directly to an evangelist, which I do, I've recently given to one, that's not an offering. And here's, I'm trying to help you understand how God works. When we give that way, that's called a tzedakah. Tzedakah, here I have my, I'm actually at my office, so I have my, dictionary here um just a second here um just um uh, here so a tzedakah actually means that it's a given it's a giving that's seen as a moral obligation it's kind of like if you are about to get married or you're newlyweds and you see somebody playing the accordion or the fiddle on a street corner and you're enjoying your ice cream because you're in florida or whatever you want to give five dollars to that person because they bless you with their music you know uh, they're playing on a street corner they clearly need the money unless they're doing an experiment which i've done those experiments once before just to see if people react to quality music and and joshua bell did that experience and this is a guy that can charge fifty thousand per half an hour of music that he performs with the orchestras uh, i mean i mean my music is very valuable too but i've done those experiments to see will people respond to high quality music or not so you know usually you'll give it uh, something to a, a person playing on the street corner or or unfortunately somebody begging that's called it tzedakah that's not an offering because what happens is when you sow an offering, it's a spiritual principle there I've been learning over time, uh, is you're really sowing into soil and you want to know it's good soil. I know that when I was newlywed with Melissa in 2012, we would travel the world together, uh, more specifically North America. And I used to give sometimes, I would obviously give my offerings and tithes to a few different ministries, not one, to a few. But then I would, uh, you know, you know, so it'll be the tithe, the offerings. I don't want to go into those details, but I would sometimes give to poor people begging on the street corners, and then I'll try to give them out a CD to reach them for the good news. The problem with that was that when you give money to those people, they could be doing drugs, they could be doing alcohol, they could be abusers. Uh, you don't know what they're doing. They could be involved in prostitution. You, you don't know what they're doing. And if you're giving them money, you cannot tell the Lord, "Look, Lord, I gave twenty dollars to that person, and uh, you know, earlier this morning, two hundred dollars came in from some sales, and I'm trying to give my." tied from the morning to that person like you know it depends on your business or your workplace if you get a salary it's much easier to estimate if you're working by the hour by the minute by the second you kind of want to give a tither on every bit that comes in but the problem is when you give to those people on the streets now you, if you say to the lord if this was your tithe or your offering from a given income that was generated in in a given morning time the problem with that is now you're sowed into that and now you're sowing into the drugs and whatever they're doing and I, every time i did that as an extra giving, I felt like I'm cursed. I felt like, oh my goodness, what is going on? My spirit is grieved. I feel like I can't focus. I cannot attend to the emails coming in on my phone or whatever. And that's when I understood, even when you support a missionary or an evangelist in Africa, in India, wherever they are, you know, you're giving a tzedakah. That's not a tithe or an offering. So, you know, I recently support an evangelist and I know now when I give to those guys, it's just a tzedakah means I'm basically giving out of a moral obligation trying to help a friend who needs grocery money and every time i've helped missionaries along the way when i travel from ottawa to toronto to uh, miami florida and every city in between those missionaries 
oftentimes would tell me just what I've already sensed in the spirit that they need the money for fuel. That, that, I mean, they would tell me that. I would like literally say, here, I want to give you $50 worth of CDs as a gift or $100 worth of CDs. That was common. I used to give them $200 worth of CDs to equip them. And then I'd say, and here's another, I don't know, $50 to $100 for you as a gift, cash-wise. And they would tell me, oh, thank you. Now we can put fuel in the car. Like, you know, that's not an offering. Because when you give an offering, you want to give to an organization that will use it to print CDs, to print Bibles, to give it out all over the world, to, to change and touch lives all over the world. That's an offering you're sowing into good soil that will be producing fruit, you know. Like, I don't rely on the people who support my, my organization. I myself support my own organization because it, it's in need right now. But when people give, I just say, wow, God bless them. And let's go do the work now. Let's now finalize that video. Let's finalize some, some shipment. Let's order more CDs. Let's give back to, to other organizations. That's an offering and you can count it as an offering and I make sure to bless it for you. I mean, not every organization will bless your offering for you, but I just try to do it at my best. But uh, when you give to the poor people, to poor evangelists, to missionaries, uh, and say you're in this Christian and messianic world and you want to help spread the good news, that's a tzedakah because these people oftentimes, if they're not organized and they don't have a board, they don't have accountability, you don't want to connect your spirit to them. Like, you know, you don't know what they're doing. You, you know, like I said, the person on the street, that's drugs, cocaine, you don't know what you're giving into. Um, you know, smoking addictions. And so that should only be at Sadaka. In fact, I don't give to poor people like that anymore. I only give to organizations that will help them. They say, we help the homeless, we help. But with evangelists, yes, I give them sometimes. But now I know, because the Lord taught me, that it's just at Sadaka. In other words, they're going to use it to buy their groceries, their fuel, they, they pay for fuel. They're not going to use it to further the kingdom of God right away or in any way that's organized. And so my giving to them was just to help them survive, basically. It's not an offering. It's called specifically at tzedakah. So I hope this helps you understand about giving and why God will bless you or not bless you based on your giving because you need to know in your heart are you giving an offering to the Lord or are you giving a tzedakah to the poor and the needy which is in again in the term here is a charitable giving seen only as a moral obligation. It's in the definition here in the dictionary. I'm at my office right now. So I hope you know the difference and of course if you want to support our work uh, I appreciate it. If you want to support also some other ministries just know the difference between the offerings and tzedakah so that you can be blessed and produce good fruit when you sow into good soil and that's what i've been doing lately and it makes a huge difference to apply the right principles uh even be careful who you allow to pray for you like if you're in business or in a high position maybe you are an executive director or you have a business or some startup ministry you're doing or a startup tech company don't allow people to pray for you for your finances who are you know don't have any knowledge about that like have established leaders pray for your finances and have other people just pray for you to be whole and complete and stuff like that you know for just god's peace or just don't ask them to pray at all like always be careful with all that so when we sow financially or sow in prayer and ask other people to pray with us be very careful there who you affiliate with because i tell you anytime people prayed for me financially who have no background in finances i was like oh yeah it's just not doesn't feel right now no, it does not it doesn't work you know and suddenly it's like support stops <laughs> and then when the right people pray, support is 10 times higher. And so make sure to do that. Let me know if I can pray for you. I'll leave my contact info below. And I hope it helps. Let me know what I could teach next time on. Maybe I could teach about overcoming some fears, uh, breaking through to the next level. You know, with God, all things are possible. But we have to be very diligent. Amen.